Jumping right into things, you can follow along at my blog over at cyberdonald.com. I will link it in the description down below where I do have a high level summary before diving into things. Let's talk about this lab. The, the description reads, the lab's change email function is vulnerable to CSRF. To solve the lab, perform a CSRF attack that changes the victim's email address. You should use the provided exploit so server to host your attack and credentials are provided. Let's just step back for a second and kind of talk about the importance of the same site strict security header and why it's relevant. If you work in cybersecurity, if you're a developer, if you're a student, if you do CTFs, if you like to be on Hack the Box, you will eventually come across a header on a web page that has same site set to something. And if it's set to strict, that's usually pretty good because this is how you defend against CSRF attacks. However, just because you've put that security header in place, it's not a silver bullet. And there are still misconfigurations that can completely bypass the security measures that come from a same site strict header. And we're gonna explore that with this lab. Let's take a look here on my blog at a very high level, the steps to reproduce. So the first thing we do is we understand the application. We learn there's a login function, a change email function, there is a blog functionality, and we go through the CSRF checklist to see if we in fact have a valid attack surface. We then focus on crafting our payload. So that includes modifying the request, creating and leveraging the redirect in our payload, throwing in some path inclusion, to reach the appropriate API endpoint and to encode some special characters. And then finally we wrap and wrap it within JavaScript and serve it up on a server. Let's go ahead and take a look at the blog. All right, so I have Burp Suite open and our proxied browser over here on the right. Normally when I do this, I will actually go through everything with intercept off and I'll try out all the functions like your login, your change email, commenting on a blog. And then I'll go back and look at HTTP history to review what um, has come up and, and kind of work from there. But for the purposes of this video, I'll have intercept turned on as we go through this. The first thing we're gonna do is check out that login function. So let's head over to my account. And we'll log in. Username Wiener, password is Peter. Okay, let's take a look at what happened there when we logged in. Big thing to note is a cookie was indeed set here. So we can see, oh, that was a 302. This was the response, 302 found and cookie was set by the server. So this is good because one of the first requirements of a CSRF attack, the first of three, is we need to use cookie session-based handling. And we see that, we can see the server has set a session related cookie. So this is great. The next natural step will be to change your email and take a look. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll come here and we'll just say aaa at gmail.com. We'll update our email. Let's take a look. And we can see our, our post here to my account change email. And then we see the get my account, okay. Now, when we are doing bug bounties or CTFs or going through web application assessments, I like to change, and I like to do this because it's standard practice, the post request to such functions to a get request to see if they work. This can widen our attack surface and provide us more flexibility when it comes to making our payload. Because if we do it from a get request, it can generate client side scripts or activities that may not otherwise be accessed as well. We don't have to rely on post, which generally does have more security wrapped around it. Because this is Burp Suite, we can simply just change this to a get request and send it. So let's go ahead and send this to repeater and then we'll send this off. Send to repeater, we'll change the request type. And you can see here it made the change for us. So it identified the variables, shuffled them up here, and we're gonna send this. I'm gonna change my email though, because we have used one. 
and you can see that it was found. This means the endpoint does in fact accept get requests. Uh, when we are making a query through a URL um, API path. So this is fantastic. The next thing for us to do will be to head over to the blog and take a look at that. So let's go over there. We're here on the blog, we'll view a post. Now I'm actually gonna turn intercept on for this one because it moves quick. We're gonna leave a post, we'll just say test, test, aa at gmail.com, perfect. And this is just ping pong. This is just the web socket here, I believe. Um, checking in, yeah, it is. That's just the web socket. Okay, we'll forward that off. More web socket data. Let's just clear that. Intercept on off. Okay, we post our comment. And we can see our post heading to our server. As expected, nothing special there. We'll forward that packet and the web socket. We then see we have following our post a get request that gets sent client side. I didn't initiate this request, but the browser was told to. And we can see it is doing a get to post comment confirmation post ID too. Interesting, let's go ahead and forward that. And you can see we are redirected to this page. Okay. And it looks like we are then redirected back to the blog. Wow, let's take a look at what happened here in the HTTP history. We commented on the blog, right? Simple enough, post ID too. We then see that we were redirected to post comment confirmation too. There's the server response. That's all kind of good. And then down here, you can see the resource JS comment confirmation redirect script was called. And this is the actual redirect. Sorry, prior to this, that wasn't, I guess, a redirect. It was just thank. It, it was just an application layer change to say thank you instead of what you want to post. This is the real redirect right here. And you can see that the redirect script in the response is down here. And this redirect script on confirmation takes the blog path and it sets our window location. So our window location is our current URL and it appends this to post ID. So it searches the URL parameter and it adds that, which will be our post ID. And it uh, concatenates this down here. So this is insecure because it's accepting user controlled input and passing it to its web application function. Like it's, it's processing that whole URL and we can put whatever we want in there, um, but there could be sanitization. We don't know. Let's start building this payload and talk about that. But just before that, a couple things. There needs to be three, three criteria for us to conduct a successful CRF attack. There needs to be relevant user input. We saw this with the change email function. Secondly, there needs to be cookie-based session handling. We saw this when we logged in and the server set the session cookie. Lastly, there can't be any predictable or unpredictable CSRF tokens. And we didn't see anything. Crafting our payload will be done in four steps. The first step, we're gonna start basic. Our payload, we just wanna change the email function. That's, that's like gonna be a core part of it. So let's get that down on paper here. Okay, I have the most simple form of our payload, which is just to change the email. Because we tested earlier, and determined that the endpoint actually accepts get requests and not just a post for the email change, we can test our payload in the URL. Let's try that. You can see it worked. It actually worked with that URL path. It brought us to the endpoint and triggered the function, passed the parameters to the back end, and our email was changed and that's now reflected in the front end. So that's fantastic. This is where things get interesting. What we need to do from here is we need to bypass the same site strict header. What this means is we need the client to execute from their browser. We can't redirect them to our exploit server and just have the server run the payload or some JavaScript or HTML on their web page. 
we need it to appear as if it's from their browser. Like we actually need the browser to make the request. Well, the first thing we should do is leverage this post comment confirmation because that's what triggers the redirect. Okay, this is this our payload. There's four steps to build the payload. This is the second step. I'll walk you through it. It's going to be our redirect. So we're going to do post comment confirmation. And we know that page calls the redirect. I'll show you in a second. Then we append my account, change email, and our email function. Will this work? Let's find out. We copy this, we come over to our browser, we paste it in. You can see we are thanked for our comment. That's the first part of our UL that's being passed. And okay, this is not bad. So we weren't denied. Our request wasn't dropped by a firewall per se. The endpoint isn't completely clueless with our request because it accepted it. It just didn't end up perhaps where we wanted it to. An easy fix here is, you know, if we were, if you're doing a bug bounty, for example, sometimes the errors you'll get from a, a broken resource will actually show you the directory that the web page is running out of. And it's usually like, like www or root www um, inet pub, right? If you're doing IIS, it's almost always going to be in there. Um, but it's good practice to see if we can actually break out of there. And we're going to test that now by just doing a simple path traversal right after our initial query string. Let's repaste this payload. And here where we see confirmation question mark post ID equals, we're going to try a tra path traversal, traversal and just drop down a directory. Let's run this. Again, we're thanked for our comment. And now we're going to get the so not found. Okay. Fair enough. Let's try it again, but do a double traversal. So I'll just say post ID two dot dot slash dot dot. Okay. Um, I'll change this in case it changed to triple G. Let's give this a shot. We are thanked for our comment again. Now the redirect.js is triggered and it says missing parameter submit. Okay, we're making progress. So what's the issue here? Well, it doesn't see submit. Like it sees it, but it doesn't, like it doesn't detect it, right? It's missing a parameter. Like it, it, it doesn't think we passed that. Well, what can we do? Well, because we turned a post request to a get request and we're now passing our parameters through the URL query path, instead of the body of that request, we're gonna to need to do some URL encoding. Let's repaste our payload and URL encode the and sign. And then I just wanna take a step back and show you that page that triggers the redirect, just to offer some clarification there. But if we change the and sign to %26, yes, %26, we'll send off our payload cross our fingers. It's taking a while, so that's good. <laughs> Sorry, that's not good. I made a mistake. I double pasted the URL. Let me just fix that. Sorry for one second here. Let's kill that. Okay. Okay, we're sending the our new URL path off. Let's see. Oh, I got two. I don't want that. Don't need two backslashes. Apologies for the confusion there. I've just pasted the payload down below. Sometimes it's hard to talk while you're doing a video and kind of walk through everything. Okay, so let's try this again. I'm confident it'll work. We're gonna copy our payload here, which has the path traversal and the URL encoded ampersand. We're gonna paste this up here. Hit enter. And again, we're thanked for our comment. Now we hit that redirect and it worked. Our email was changed to bananas. Let's just back up. I wanna show you briefly the blog comment page if I can. 
Okay, here we go. So when you post that comment, you're pushed to the post comment confirmation, which then executes this script, resource.js comment confirmation redirect.js. And then it says redirect on confirmation post. And that's what brings us to, of course, execute our JavaScript. So again, it's the workflow, it's four steps, right? We post our comment. Then on the server side, post comment confirmation is executed and we're sent over here where we are then pushed to the comment confirmation redirect JavaScript. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice just broke. And this code down here is executed and it takes that input of our post ID, which we're taking advantage of, and it passes it here in the string in the next post. All right. Let's now move on to our final step. Our final step is to wrap and serve the payload. The way we're going to do this is we're going to go to Windows Exploit Server. But before we do that, I just want to cover the importance of the Windows dot location command. Okay, so if we type window dot location, it will show us where we are. And again, this window.location is an object by your browser that just stores literally where you are. And you can see that here, okay? This is very important. We're gonna go to the exploit server and window.location is how we're going to execute our payload. So it looks like it came from the client's browser, from the client themselves. We'll give this a sec to load up. All right, the way to host the exploit is we have our payload, right? We already know what that is. In fact, let me just grab it. Right, this is our payload as it stands. How we're going to get this to run client side by the user who visits our server is we need to first of all use JavaScript. So this whole thing is gonna run in JavaScript. So it executes when they visit. So let's go ahead and just do our tags for JavaScript. And the next thing we'll have to do after this is we're going to need to use window location in order to generate the request client side from their browser. So it actually appears legitimate and tricks the same site. Okay, I put double quotes around our payload and I've ended it here with the semicolon. And the final step for our payload is just to put in the object window location equals this. And you can test this beforehand because it takes a bit to trigger on the attack machine. So if you send this off and it doesn't trigger and show that you solved the lab right away, just be patient, give it five minutes. If it works in the URL, it will work here. We store this exploit. And to another way to test this is to actually view the exploit. So if we will deliver the exploit here, just while we're here. Oh, okay. While we wait, let's view the exploit in real time. So we click view exploit and watch this. So it, do you see that it actually went to our exploit server there? It reader, oh, <laughs> we're not logged in. No. You have to log in for the example, hang tight here. Let's uh, try that again. Let's go back to the exploit server. I'm gonna change our email again to 000. Okay, we'll store this and now we will view the exploit. And you can see it went to our exploit server and then we were immediately sent over here. Thanks for our comment, that redirect was hit. We changed our email, it worked, there it is.